What's going on everybody? Aaron here helping musicians get better, faster through performances, educational videos, and product reviews. Today we're going to be going over the Florida Allstate 2020 technical etude for both trombone and euphonium. Now this comes out of the Voxman Selected Studies for Trombone and Euphonium. If you haven't already picked up that book, I would suggest going ahead and snagging it because not only are you going to use it for your 910 audition, but it's going to pop up for your 1112. I know with my private lesson students, a lot of times we'll do the etudes out of that book throughout the year so that we kind of accidentally uh, play the Allstate etude without realizing that we're playing the Allstate etude so that when they call it for the next year, We've already worked on it, we just have to rework it back up. But anyway, if you don't already have that book, it's in the description down below and the specific edition of the book that the FBA wants you to audition out of. But anyway, let's dive right into some of the problems with this. So the first thing is, is it is forte and then suddenly piano. So what I would suggest is you actually start at a bigger forte than you normally would, a little bit broader, so that way when you go down to the piano, you don't have to like throw cotton balls into your mouthpiece. Like it doesn't have to be this like, it doesn't have to be this very, very tiny staccato sound. You can bring it up to like a mezzo piano if your forte is on the broader side of forte. And then the next thing is it is in 6-8 and we should be thinking about it that way. Uh, but what I tend to do as I look at it and I work on it is I actually think about it as like a 3-8 and I really think about it on a very slow side of things because of the dotted eighth, sixteenth, eighth, to make sure that I'm working on getting them as even as I possibly can, I'm thinking about it as one and three, one and three, one and three, one, two, three. I'm trying to think about it as best I can that way, as opposed to the as opposed to just like having this weird six, eight, how do I count it? You know, trying to get away from that, I'm really just trying to think about it as one and three, one and three, to really simplify it and make sure that I'm putting that 16th note exactly where it needs to be. And these 16th notes and these eighth notes and all of this stuff, they need to be very crisp. They need to be very much exactly where they need to be, but you also don't want to shorten them up because there is no staccato marking here, you don't want to have the notes be super short. However, a lot of people tend to clip these notes um, because it's a technical etude, so they have to be very, very articulate. Don't feel like you have to be that way. So I personally wouldn't want to hear the etude played without that eighth note being blown through. I actually want to hear that eighth note all the way through. One big airstream, I'm never stopping my air, and I'm just letting my tongue and my articulation create the uh, sounds that I wanna hear rhythmically. The other thing to be very careful of is this thing does have jumps, and you wanna be very hesitant to just, in those jumps, play those jumps really loud. Sometimes I'll hear something along the lines of it just jumps out at you and just because it's higher all of a sudden it's way louder try to keep it even you know and just just keep it at the same volume as everything else it's not marked louder keep it at the same volume also a trap that is in here if you're not paying close attention i think it's measure 46 47 if i've counted right um those two measures are actually different so you've been going around this whole time since the beginning playing one and three, one and three. And then the pickups into essentially what is the second big phrase of this, they have the same rhythm and then they back it up by reversing the rhythm. So instead of having a dotted eighth, 16th eighth, then on this big beat two, they'll have a eighth dotted eighth, 16th. So then they reverse the rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. One, two, and one. So then they have those two back to back. So just watch out for those. That's the two beats where they kind of mix those up a little bit. Keep a close eye on that. I even on mine have it circled. So just 
keep an eye on that. Uh, it's also really easy when you're doing a run through, even if it's something you've practiced, it's something that's really easy to forget about. Um, so I have it marked just to watch out for that. The next thing is, is these are written as terrace dynamics and we want to try our best to do what is actually on the piece of paper, just the rules that Florida Allstate likes us to play at. So in playing that game, make sure you do not day crescendo to the phrase that has the piano. So, you know, even though artistically it might sound nice to, you know, and day crescendo into the, into the volume that you want to play, even though that might sound nice, Unfortunately, I don't think it's something that you should do. So maintain the volume as you possibly can. And you know, it's gonna be impressive if you can go from big and then all of a sudden be quiet. You know, pretty cool right there. So keep that in mind as you're going through it, trying our best to not uh, decrescendo into the piano. The next big thing I'll say is just watch out on, the, on this phrase here, when the piano starts, um, you have that ba ba da ba ba ba. You have the house top accent with a dotted quarter. Just make sure you don't really clip that off uh, and make it not last a full quarter length. I tend to err on giving it emphasis, maybe a little bit of decay, but making sure it still takes up, you know, three eighth note beats. You know, ba. What da ba ba beep ba? There's a little bit of decay, but it's still, you know, holding its entire value. You just want to be careful about playing it really short. You've got staccatos over top of so many other things that it's really easy to kind of give it, give it this thing. You know, but it's a dotted quarter. It's the only one that's actually there and it's written as a dotted quarter. So I would make sure that you give it its whole rhythm of all three eighth notes um, just to really be particular on exactly what the rhythm is supposed to be. The other thing that I've, I've heard a lot when this etude's been done, the other thing I hear a lot is once we get into the people will speed up or they'll slow down, especially if you're getting tired with single tongue. They'll start to do that. And the other thing is too, is they will also, a lot of times I'll hear decrescendos or crescendos. Most often I'll hear crescendos. So you'll get this. Which artistically is cool. It's, it's, a, it's a fun little dynamic journey you're taking me on, but it's not what's written. And with Florida Allstate, again, I tend to lean on doing exactly what's written. That's what the judges tend to look for. So I would stay quiet as long as possible and then hit them with the, uh, with the forte after that D quarter note. Just boom, right, right there on that pickup. And that's another thing, right on that pickup, a lot of times I'll hear people kind of crescendo through that pickup because they're not super confident in playing the forte right off the bat. So you'll kind of get this. You want to make sure that that forte is right on the money. I tend to breathe after that D uh, quarter note and then blow right into it so you get this. So on and so forth. The other thing is, the last thing, it, it is the last thing, uh, the last note, I hear that thing fracked and chipped and splatted and all sorts of stuff a lot from very good players. So you'll get this like, you'll end up with this really good phrase and then that last note just sounds really out of character. <laughs> And it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna put my exclamation mark on that. No, don't do that. It is low, it is going to have a lot of volume to it. Um, you do not want to be splatty, you do not want to lose your nice characteristic sound. Done. And also, make sure it is a full-blown eighth note, not ba ba da blop, and just done. Make sure that you're doing that. So the big things, watch out for your dynamics, watch out for your tempo, make sure your tempo is even and make sure that your articulations are exactly what's on this piece of paper. But otherwise, it's not that bad of an etude. It's actually a really good study and I'm, I'm sh fairly confident that most of you are gonna be able to work it up. If not, uh, if you're having a hard time with it, I do teach private lessons. 
So if you want a little bit of extra help with this, even if you don't necessarily live where I live, get a hold of me, let's contact me, let me know if you need any extra help and I'm more than happy to schedule a lesson with you and you know see what we can do. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the playlist that this video is in on my channel because I also give tips on the audition itself as well as you can find the lyrical etude and my tips for the lyrical etude for this year as well in that playlist. But anyway guys, that's all I've got for this one. Again, my name's Aaron, reminding you to be happy, never satisfied, and I'll see you next time.